Hey, welcome back, Knife Nerds and Everyday Care people. It's uh, the Big Connector here, and um, what we're going to do is we are going to have a look at starting to do our acid etch of this uh, spider coal horn cliff here. So, this Delica. Now, you can see here, let's get some real, you can see she's got some scratches on it. And so what I thought I would do is I figured that I would uh, do an acid uh, wash on it and then perhaps uh, maybe a stone wash too as well. So uh, I thought I would, uh, you know, shoot this video and let's uh, see what we can uh, what we can do. So now the first thing I'm going to need, of course, is a knife. Now I've got all my kind of equipment here. So what I ended up doing here is, oh, let's see here. Ah, she's in the French side. Ha 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 ha. So I ended up going down to the hardware store, and uh, I live in Lethbridge on the west side, and there's not a whole lot of hardware stores. There's one. I think there's a Home Depot or Home Hardware. It's really, oh, it's uh, quite small. So what I ended up doing is, now they had a big, huge jug of muratic acid there, um, a four-liter uh, jug of muratic acid, and I certainly didn't need that much, right? you know, something of this size. So the other thing I thought I would do is, is it's got, um, this is got some hydrochloric acid that's in it right now. So contains hydrochloric acid. So I'm thinking it's going to be a little bit of a weaker solution than a, a than a, a full on hydrochloric acid. And I'm hoping it's going to be enough that even if it takes a little bit of a longer time, that it acid washes this uh, Hat 40 blade as well as this clip and the hardware. So now I'm going to need that. So now the other thing I'm going to need is, of course, I've got some uh, nail polish there with the uh, to paint up the pivot area because I certainly don't want to get that all um, acided up because sometimes the tolerances on these knives are so small that if you, you know, take some of that pivot away by, you know, by acid washing it or you get that rough kind of opening the feeling, which I do not like. So the parts that I don't want to have acid touch i'm going to cover in this nail polish and the acid will not eat away at the nail polish i'm hoping so now we have got some ppe here we've got some nitrile gloves we've got some uh, just some regular old uh, bamboo wipes here kirkland baby wipes from my granddaughter uh we've got some little uh pads uh for cleaning up the um nail polish of course we've got some acetone and then we've got a little bit of windex just to kind of clean up too as well and of course, we've got some goggles here. We don't want to, I don't think I'm going to wear the goggles because I do have glasses on and uh, my eyes should be good. If I feel like I'm getting a little bit burny eyes, then I will put on the goggles. And then, of course, we've got a plastic cup right here that is um, going to be the one that I dip everything in. And uh, now the other thing here you can see on the table here is we've got a, a little... Uh, a disposable chopstick and some uh, dental floss and now what i'm going to use that for is i'm going to use that for uh just tying the blade on and then i'm going to put it on top and i'm just going to hang the blade and the clip down in there using the dental floss and that'll give me the uh, time to uh you know support that stuff inside the acid so i'm hoping that this works so let's uh we're going to take apart uh our good old delica here Please uh, forgive my my gimbalific uh, <laughs> my gimbalific uh, camera skills here. So the first thing we're gonna do is let's let's take apart this uh, this delica and we'll get everything all uh, ready to uh, paint in the uh, in the um, nail polish. So when I get everything cleared away, we'll be uh, making some jump cuts here. All right, see you in a second. All right, here. So. I've got these uh, all cleaned up, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some nail polish, and I want to put it on the areas where I don't want the acid to etch and change the color. I want to keep it nice and kind of slippery and nice and shiny, and it looks like so it looks like we're here, this area here, this pivot, probably this area in there too as well, the internals here where you're going to have some... Uh, of your other stuff meat I'll probably do down inside here too as well now I am going to acid wash this I, and I don't know if I'm going to dip the whole thing in there I'm going to see if I can maybe just dip this little bit and just get the the part of the stuff that's actually showing 
Um, the other thing I'm going to do here is I have the uh, other pins. So, of course, we've got this side, which is going to be, and then here's the actual the screw side. So those are going to be acid washed on each side. Now, I just don't know how I'm going to do that. If I want to dip this whole thing in there, or if I want to kind of suspend it and just dip the little bit, the heads in there, flip it over, dip the heads in there a little bit. That'll be the more time-consuming way, but I don't think I want to kind of take the chance of getting this kind of acid washed and then the threads inside not fitting. And of course, we've got uh, the main pivot screw in here is going to get uh, acid washed here, which is not, that's not it. But those are the uh, head screws for the clip. The clip here is also going to be acid washed, wherever the heck that is. Now, I was also wondering about perhaps seeing if I could keep this shiny, but who knows? I think I'll probably just do the whole thing. And then, of course, you can't really see here, but uh, I've got the, uh, the female part of the pivot inside this little shot glass, which is a somehow I ended up with a Walking Dead shot glass with, uh, I think, Norman Reedus on there. Um, I, I have no idea where this came from, but um, I've got a little bit of solution in there. And the reason I've got the stop pin or the stop pin, the pivot bushing in there is because there's some gunk deep inside the threads and I can't get the um, the screw to screw all the way down. So we're going to try to get that out. We'll see if that, that'll happen. But uh, that's where I'm at right now. So we're going to start some painting. And when I come back, this will all be done up and uh, we'll see if we, we'll see if our ferrochloric acid um, toilet bowl cleaner was going to etch some of this stuff. We'll find out if it's strong enough. All right, so we've got our um, stuff tied on. We have our pivot painted all up, but it's going to take a It's not quite dry yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, let it uh, dry and harden up, and then I'm going to uh, fill up this cup full of my hydrochloric acid, not uh, muriatic acid, <clears throat> and we'll find out what it does. Now, this is, contains hydrochloric acid, yeah, so it's just basically a super strength toilet bowl cleaner. Sometimes you get those hard water kind of scales, um, calcium deposits in there, and there's an, it's kind of, a, I guess, a weaker acid than like a pure muriatic or hydrochloric, and so I'm hoping that it will still etch the metals. Maybe it'll take a longer time, um, but it will uh, still do the job. And it's just something that I didn't, yeah, with the, the grandkids coming to stay with us and stuff, even though I, I hide it, you know, I'm a, a grandpa and I get a little paranoid. I'm kind of hoping that they wouldn't get into uh, some hydrochloric acid or muriatic acid and burn the hell out of themselves. You know, where this here can still burn a little bit itself all right let's uh we'll take it from there all right uh, please forgive the the little bit of a humming noise and please forgive the old uh, camera i'm gonna try to now um fill up my uh container here with some of my acid solution and then i'm going to uh, start dipping the old uh metal parts now she's uh now the one thing here i want to say is you know i've got a little bit of a hum happening here because i'm actually in the washroom here and i've just got the fan going and of course i've got some gloves happening and um, did some looking with this acid solution it is a water-based acid solution so it will uh i don't have to worry about it if I can, if I dump her straight down the the sink here, and I end up um, flushing it full of water, then it will, of course, just go down the drain, and that's kind of what it's designed for. So let's just see here. All right, she's looking like she's all pretty. Now, the, you want to make sure that your blade and your Anything that you're dipping is clean. You don't want to have any sort of uh, 
liquid left on it, like you don't have any grease or anything like that. Otherwise, you're going to have a splotty acid wash because it will um, not penetrate properly. It will interfere. Oh, I like that dinging. So let's just see what happens here. Let's dip it down. Uh, she's pretty darn close. She's, she's in there. So now what you want to do is you want to kind of periodically take this out and you'll want to just see, um, you know, set a timer, try it for like a minute and then five minutes and 10 minutes and 30 minutes. It can take some a long time to get going. Now, once you've got the desired darkness from the acid that you want, you'll want to neutralize it right away. And that's, you know, getting it into some water and rinsing it off right away. And then that kind of stops your corrosion. So I'm going to set a timer and um, we will uh, just check it out here after probably a few minutes. All right. Okay, five minutes has gone by and let's just have a look and see if there's any sort of change to this knife uh, blade. With this, does not look like it's chilled. Maybe she's darkening up just a smidge. Uh, you can see that. Huh. Seems to be darkening up a little bit. Doesn't seem to be too strong of an acid. So what we're going to do here is we're going to try. Let's uh, let's give it 30 minutes. If I haven't noticed a real good change after 30 minutes, I think that um, she just might be a little bit of a bust here. And I might have to just go ahead and get some muriatic acid and finish it off that way. All right, let's try that. All right, uh, we're back here another day. And um, now what seems to have happened is the solution that I had mixed using the uh, kind of toilet bowl cleaner with that kind of hydrochloric acid was totally not strong enough to really get a good uh, bit of acid uh, washing. So I've actually went and got some muriatic acid. So we're going to dilute this muriatic acid, um, one part water uh, to two parts acid. No, oh, yes, that's what we're going to do that. So we're going to try to dilute it a little bit. We'll see if that works. Now, even though um, it was a weak acid, the other stuff, I used a um, dental floss to kind of tie uh, my stuff to this little bamboo uh, chopstick and... It did dissolve the. Uh, <laughs> it did dissolve the. Uh, the uh, dental floss. So uh, now I'm working with the muriatic acid. Now I've got some uh, bicarbonate here in a little solution, and it's not mixed up yet. But um, I keep on shaking it here, and I just want to uh, have this as kind of a a neutralizing agent because uh, it was sodium bicarbonate or baking soda will neutralize the muriatic acid. And uh, you're gonna eventually have to use that to dispose of this too as well. So you don't wanna just dump straight muriatic acid down your drain. Now, the other thing here I'm gonna end up using is, I'm gonna have the fan on here, and I'm doing this in the washroom just because it's got a little bit more ventilated. It's cold outside, it's snowing. So otherwise I would be trying to take care of it outside, um, but, I've got, uh, this is the best ventilated area I have right now, so know that that's on. So I'm gonna mix my solution here. Now I'm going to add the water first because you always want to add your acid into your mixing solution. Don't put your mixing solution in the acid, just kind of a rule of thumb. So I've got my nitrile gloves here. I've got my uh, safety glasses on and I do not have a respirator, a breathing apparatus. I can't seem to find my mask. So, well, let's just hope that uh, this fan is good enough. So don't try this at home, kids. And um, too bad about live streaming this. If I end up hitting the floor, then uh, <laughs> nobody can phone the ambulance, damn it. Well, let's just hope uh, we didn't uh, do anything wrong here. All right, so let's try this out here first. Um, I've got it on top of a uh, kind of a baking sheet with some... Um, 
uh, tin foil on it just to kind of stop any sort of spills. So we're going to start adding the water, the acid, and then we're going to dip and we're going to try probably five minutes right off the bat. So solution is one part water, two parts muriatic acid. Okay, thanks. Okay, now she's in the uh, solution. Um, now, when I poured the uh, muriatic acid in the water, it did create a little bit of um, a reaction in the in the cup. Uh, just a tiny bit of gas you could see there, and I just kind of took it, held it up to the fan, and the fan kind of took it away. And um, yeah, so what we're going to do here is we're going to try five minutes. Now I do notice that you can see here. Here, let's uh, let's just see here what's happening. Uh, if you can see in there, uh, I guess maybe you can't. But tiny bit of a bubble here. Okay, so let's give it a try here. So once um. Once the, I've got the desired color that I want, I'm going to neutralize it here with the bicarbonate and uh, wash it all off. And then we will start the uh, stone washing process. Okay, here we go. Let's put a timer on this. All right, we're back after five minutes. And it does sound, smell kind of yucky in this bathroom. And as you can see, it doesn't seem like it's very... Uh, doesn't seem like it's changing a lot of color. It is changing a bit. All right, so that's five minutes. So what we're going to end up doing here is let's try it out here for probably 15 minutes, and then uh, we'll come and check it right after that. So it is starting to change color. All right, you'll notice that there is no uh, little blue container here because uh, I took it outside. It was really starting to create like a gas, so, and it smelled quite badly in here. So what I ended up doing was uh, just taking it outside. I let it sit there. I had it after 15 minutes, and it did. Uh, it is doing its job. It's darkening it up, but it looks a little splotchy, so... Let's, I'm going to put it in for 25 more minutes, and I'm thinking that will probably be it. So that'll be a total of probably about an hour in there. So just to give you an idea. So now here, what we've got is we've got the hardware, um, and uh, I've taken those and put them in a solution of vinegar. And uh, I'm going to leave these in here for quite some time. We'll see how they change. I just don't want to mess with that muriatic acid anymore. I mean, it's... Um, it's pretty nasty stuff, and uh, I think the next time I attempt to do this, acid wash a blade, I might do it again because I love the look of it, and I've got a few knives I definitely want to customize, but I want to do it outside. So this is just something I want to continue on to try it out here, and I'm not sure if you noticed, but uh, I've got a, a bandaid on my finger. Uh, I had my smock in a suitcase in a side pocket. I reached in to grab it and it somehow had come open and uh, gave me a little bit of a bite. So, hey, if you don't have a Band-Aid on your finger at least once a month, you're not a true knife guy. Or maybe you're just a dumbass knife guy like me. All right. See you in a bit. All right. Here we go. So now what I ended up doing is got myself kind of just a Powerade bottle. And um, so... I put in a whole bunch of change. Now you can use rocks, you can use ceramic, you can use ball bearings and stuff like that. And uh, as you're kind of your medium, I just wanted to put some, some copper in there as well as some brass. Um, there's little brass hangers for uh, pictures and stuff like that. And I wanted to kind of get a little bit of a kind of a, a lightning strike kind of going. So. I'm just not sure if you can see that, but holy cow, does that ever, uh, it's pretty neat. But uh, as you can see, you've got the two different types of uh, material here. You've got the um, uh, the Hop 40 on the inside, and it looks like it's not taking the patina near as well as um, the other stuff, the SUS 410. Now, this clip looks like it's done a really, really nice color to it as uniform color as well as this backspacer so we're going to put those inside here and we're going to shake the heck out of it for probably 
I'm going to say 10 minutes, and then um, we'll see what it looks like when we're done that. So kind of put that in there, and we'll put that in there, and then we'll put that in there. Now, the other thing that I put in there too as well is I put a little bit of water and a little bit of um, dish soap too as well, just to kind of get it uh, uh, rinsing off. So let's, uh, you know, so now you just want to kind of give it a shake. Just like so. And now we'll put a little bit of a uh, timer on there and then I'll fill it full of water and uh, try to rinse some of this off and we'll get the blade out and we'll see what she looks like after 10 minutes of shaking. All right, so now we've been kind of shaking this up for 10 minutes and just kind of turning it around, just kind of like this, nice and slow. Haven't been really shaking the heck out of it. And as you can see, she's got pretty damn foamy inside there. And you can see little flecks of pink in there. So it looks like it might uh, have uh, the uh, nail polish that I put on the pivot and stuff like that, uh, pivot hole, might be in there, have started to come off just to, uh, you know, I don't want to expose that uh, pivot area too much to too much damage. I want it as nice and smooth as possible. So let's uh, have a look. So we kind of tumbling it for about 10 minutes, just as a nice even tumble. And, um, yeah, let's uh, put a little bit of water in there and let's see what uh, what she looks like. Well, she's turned out a little bit, you know, I just don't know. Um, this side seems like it looks pretty neat. Um, looks like it's kind of got a graduated look to it. And uh, this pivot area here, even though it looks pitted and stuff like that, it you know, it feels really, really nice. Just got to kind of clean up this pivot area here. And then this stuff here, although it did uh, kind of uh, patina, it uh, didn't get too, too uh, stonewashed. Neither did the backspace here. But you know what? I think it's all going to look good when I put it all together. And um, that's what we're going to end up doing here. I'm going to uh, bring my stuff down here. I'm going to clean up the uh, all the nail polish off using the acetone. And then now uh, we'll put this knife back together and we'll see if we can get this edge uh, back to looking pretty damn nice. All right, we'll uh, do that here shortly. All right, so looks like our pivot screw and hardware and stuff in the vinegar didn't really patina too well, but that is okay. I'm gonna still try to patina them once I kind of got this all put together. I'm going to put this all get together. And then what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to dab the heads with some mustard. And I'm going to let it sit overnight in some mustard. And then I'll rinse it off. And we'll see what happens there. Okay, so first thing we want to do is we want to clean off the uh, nail polish. And we're going to use acetone with that right here. Really simple and easy couple of little squirts, a little handy dandy thing. Um, I think once this is through with the acetone, I'm going to probably see if I can um, put some just rubbing alcohol in here and uh, just a solution to clean up using the rubbing alcohol because, wow, I'm really impressed with the way that kind of squirts out there and does a perfect job uh, dispensing uh, the liquid. So, hmm. so now we have to clean off the edges. The only thing I'm not super impressed with is I'm not super impressed with these little kind of caught things they I guess they're really good for <laughs> nails but uh, on a knife they're they look like they're getting some just all over the place all right so all right so that's all cleaned off good job on that there myself now we got to see if we can get somehow this 
center in the pivot in there cleaned up because it doesn't seem to be oh yucky Let's see if you can put that on there you don't want to get too much acetone all over the place here on my countertops but holy cow And so I'm just in the process, too, of kind of kicking back and watching a movie. Uh, on a Saturday, fine Saturday. And um, it's actually the trial of the Chicago 7, which is damn interesting. Even though I'm a Canadian, you know, sometimes I, you know, I want to find out what's going on in the world. And, you know, politically wise. And uh, this looks like, holy cow, she's a pretty damn interesting movie. Uh, Sasha Baron Cohen's playing Abby Hoffman, and um, uh, yeah, there's a uh, you know William Kunstler's there, and Bobby Seale, leader of the Black Panther Party. And I guess it takes place in 1969, where there is a protest in the Democratic uh, National Convention, and um, some riots start, and so the Republican. Uh, Attorney General says, hey, we want to charge these guys with a crime, and so they do. And then um, I'm trying to think who they have as the prosecuting attorney. Uh, he started in 5050, and he was also in Batman as kind of the guy at the very end who looked like he was going to become Robin or kind of the next Batman. Uh, Joe Gord Joseph Gordon-Levitt, yes, he's, the, he's one of the prosecuting attorneys. But it seems like he's a prosecuting attorney with a little bit of a heart. <laughs> I don't know if there is such a thing. All right. So I'm going to see if I get all this cleaned up. And once I get it cleaned up, I'm going to start putting this back together. Back here with Q people and uh, Knife Nerds. It's the big Canucker here. And um, I'm just kind of shooting a little bit of addendum to this video. Um, I went to... to um, edit this video and put it together and the last piece of video that I shot and uh, about after I had put this uh, Spartaco Delica Warren Cliff back together has uh, been corrupted and I cannot get it off my uh, laptop and uh, edit it into a video so I'm just shooting this kind of on the fly to finish this off because it seemed very very unfinished and um yeah i'm kind of shooting this downstairs or in in my uh in my ensuite bathroom because um we still have some south guests uh, house guests and seems like somebody has taken over my office and will not get out and just want to um slap the shit out of them actually <laughs> all right uh southern laws what can you say all right this is what she ended up turning out and i um, you know what, in a way I'm pleased as punch and in a way I'm a little bit kind of, hmm. So what I ended up doing is I ended up using kind of a hydrochloric acid toilet bowl cleaner at first just because I didn't want to have such heavy fumes in the house. I mean, it's, it's winter time here and things are kind of closed up a little bit. And it just didn't seem to really, really kind of... Uh, have too much. I mean, I suppose I might have been able to leave it at full strength overnight and it might have done something, but I was a little bit concerned about leaving it overnight and not watching it. So the toilet bowl cleaner is not a great way to go um, unless you've got lots of time. And I may do some more experimenting with that down the road. And the reason I kind of wanted to have that in the house is early on in the beginning, I just thought the less caustic chemical and the less amount of fumes in here, the better. But sometimes I think you got to go full strength. So what I ended up going to do is I found a jug of muriatic acid, and that's what you see here. I use the, the muriatic acid on this uh, HAP40 blade, as well as the uh, clip here too as well. And then after that, I kind of stonewashed it just to kind of give it a little bit of texture. And I got to say, it, it turned out pretty kind of neat. You can see that it's kind of got a graduated thing from the bottom. It's nice and, you know, there's nothing here with the HAP40. Then it goes dark and then it lightens up. And then on this part of the blade, it, it's almost got a a pitted or a pockmarked look. But it, um, 
Now, let me see if I can zoom in on there, but it is smooth to the touch, and which I think is pretty neat. Um, so, uh, the other thing that I think I'll end up doing is this hardware here, is I couldn't get it really to kind of stonewash or acid etch itself. I was kind of hoping that the hardware would have this matte look on it too, and I, uh, you know, the same thing with the uh, clip. And um, it didn't turn out. It still got some shine to it. So I may relook at this in the summertime where I take this hardware apart and I let it sit in the muriatic acid for a lot longer than I did. So, well, this is my first attempt at kind of a really uh, an acid wash and a stone wash. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Now, if you like what you saw, please, please give me the thumbs up as well as the subscription. I really, really appreciate it. We're coming up on one year, my one year anniversary on October 30th, and I'm hoping I can get something happening that day um, because, uh, yeah, you know, and I just, you know what, it's been such a fantastic year, and I have to say thank you so much to you folks out there. The, you know, the good positive comments, you know, the positive vibes that you guys have been sending me, uh, it is much appreciated. Uh, if you've been following this channel, you know that I've been going through a health kind of situation here for the last three and a half years that's really worn on me mentally too as well. And I gotta say that uh, your positive comments and, uh, you know, the digital pats in the back have been a way that uh, has uh, kept me sane and has kept me happy throughout the, the year. And I can't say uh, thank you enough to you guys out there. So, like I said, give me a thumbs up. Give me the uh, subscription. Appreciate it. Uh, stay safe out there. Listen to the experts. Keep your shiny side up. Your stick on the ice. This is The Big Connector saying adios.